Namaste, and welcome to the Buddhism Guide podcast by Yeshi Rabge. If you'd like more of my podcasts, blogs, videos, or guided meditation practices, visit my website, yeshirabge.com. And if you'd like to support my work, go to patreon.com forward slash Buddhism Guide. I hope you enjoy this episode. This episode is called Life Advice for High School and College Students. And it's a four part special interview series. I was recently interviewed by Dash Pant for a special series in trying to help out college and high school students. Dash Pant is an incoming freshman at the University of Western Ontario's Ivy School of Business and a former student from Delhi Public School International, India. He is passionate about helping and learning from his community of high school and college students, and that is why he started this In Conversation series. So I'd like to thank him for giving me this opportunity to talk to high school and college students. But the information contained in here is not really just for them, it's advice for everybody. So I hope you enjoy this special four part series. Sometimes when we're meditating, like you said, we get some random thoughts, like what will I have for dinner? But if we've been anxious about one particular thought, let's say it was a bad moment that happened recently, a bad event that happened recently, and we felt an intense emotion. And we keep replaying that moment again and again, and we keep feeling that emotion again and again. It, it becomes extremely hard to just think of it as thinking. That is, at the end of the day, you're still thinking. It is a thought which, which may have more emotions. It may have more power over you, but just identifying it as just a thought, because that's really all it is. Does that sort of help? with thoughts that, you know, you built a story around, you played them over and over again in your head, and you've given them yeah, a lot I think if you're, if you're meditating and the same thought keeps coming, then I would try to relax yourself, calm yourself down as much as you can. And if that thought keeps coming, then while you're meditating, look at that thought. What is it? Why does it keep coming back? What is it trying to teach you? You know, the thought will come back for a reason. There's not a thought sitting in your head thinking, oh, I know, I'm really making frustrated now. I'll keep coming into his head. It doesn't work like that. There is a reason why those thoughts keep coming back. So if it keeps this, exactly the same thought keeps coming back, then look at that thought. What is this thought? Where does it stem from? What is it trying to tell me? What do I need to do to be able to let that thought go. Because a lot of the time, the thought is coming to, to tell us something. You know, if uh, somebody, you know, you care about somebody and they leave you and, you know, you're all emotional and you're all upset, but you want to move on, but you can't because that person keeps coming into your head. Now, the reason for that is that your brain is trying to protect you. Your brain keeps throwing that person up in your head and saying, hey, they left you. And you think that it's starting to torment me, but what it's trying to do is protect you so you don't make that same mistake twice. But actually what it is doing is completely driving us mad because we want to move on. So you need to look at these thoughts and analyze the thought. Why is that thought coming? What do I need to do to let that thought go? And you know, the more that you will calm down, the more the thoughts will calm down as well. But if the thought keeps coming, then face it. Don't try to push it away. Don't try to suppress it. Don't get all tangled up in it. Face it. Face, what is it? What are you doing? Why you keep coming? What are you trying to tell me? What do I need to do to get rid of you? Because by facing it is how we're going to learn. And the same for emotions are exactly the same. We have emotions and we think that 
you know, we think the, the emotions we like, uh, you know, gratitude and happiness and contentment and all these types of emotions. And the ones we dislike, anger and grief and loneliness and sadness. And we try to push those ones away. What we're doing is making those our enemy. Emotions are not our enemy. No emotion is our enemy. That emotion is your teacher. That emotion has come to say, hey, something's going on here. You better look at this. And the more that you ignore it, the more it's going to keep saying, hey, I need you to look at this. And the emotion will keep coming back time and time again. So you need to look at it. You need to face it. What, what are you trying to tell me? What is happening here? What do I need to do? Because by facing it and asking those questions, you'll deal with it. Once you've dealt with it, it will go. Remember at the beginning, I said that thoughts and emotions come to go. They're just a process. If we learn from it, we'll allow the thought and the emotion to go. Right. And I think that's really helpful, that advice to someone who, who constantly ruminates over the same thing or who's stuck in an obsessive pattern of the same thing. Of, a, of the same thought because it takes a lot of courage to you know face a thought and say okay here you are what are you trying to teach me i will learn from you and it's almost very easy it's almost instant react it's 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 almost an instant reaction to say no i'm not going to push it away i'm going to ignore you because you're making me feel bad but it will keep coming until you learn your lesson you know the more you push it away the stronger it becomes so it comes to go yeah but you're fighting against it. And what you're doing is you're holding it there. So instead of letting it go, you're holding it. And once you face it, it's like a bully. Once you face up to a bully, then they start to lose their power. Emotions are exactly the same. You face up to that emotion. It will automatically start to lose its power. And it gives you that opportunity then to learn from it. Right. And now I would sort of like to get more into um, your spiritual practice of, of Buddhism, which is based on my reading and based on your talks. You said that um, the cause of the majority of our suffering is attachment and desire. But for our age group from, let's say, 16 to 22, 23, there are lots of things going on, lots of changes. And so it's often really, really hard to detach ourselves um, especially from something we were so emotionally attached to. Let's say it was a person who has left you when you're dealing with a breakup or it's the loss of a loved one. So in that case, it, it, it's very hard to just, you know, completely remove all attachment and to just let go. And if we are to let go in order to reduce suffering, what do we attach ourselves to? What do we not attach ourselves to? No, you should never attach yourself to anything. And you know, the opposite, you said detach. The opposite to attachment isn't detachment. It's not about detaching yourself. The opposite from attachment is love. Love and attachment are the opposites and we get them totally confused and we have attachment and control and we think, I love you. And what you're doing is you're controlling them. So, if you went out and you saw this beautiful flower and you bent down and you smell the flower, it's beautiful and it's a beautiful color and it's fragrant, it's lovely. If you left it there and went on your way so other people can appreciate it, that's love. If you broke it off, took it home, put it in a jar and put it on your table, that's attachment. And that is the opposite. So we're not trying to detach ourselves from something because detachment means that we're forcing ourselves away from something. So attachment, one of the, I mean, there are so many causes of our emotional and psychological suffering, but attachment is one of the big ones because we hold on to things and we think it's mine and I own this. And of course, everything in life is impermanent. So Sooner or later, it will break, someone will steal it, you'll drop it on the floor, or you'll drop dead. But somewhere along the line, you're going to be parted from this thing. If you're holding on to it, if you're getting attached to it, then when it goes, you are going to suffer. And that suffering was caused by you, yourself, by getting attached, holding on. 
So it's not about being detached. It's about stepping back and saying, okay, you know, I have this phone and it does everything I want it to do for me. So it's great. But I know one day it won't be here or I won't be here. But while we're together, me and my phone, we'll have a good time. And it's the same with people. If you step back, and particularly this is for parents, you know, parents seem to try to control their kids a lot these days, making them be doctors and engineers and things that they really don't want to be, or pushing them in directions they don't want to go. But if they really loved the child, they would step back and watch that child grow, blossom like a flower. You know, a flower doesn't need us to do anything for it to come out and to bloom. The same for you, all of you. You all have certain skills. And while people are molding you, people are trying to make you into something, what they're doing is suppressing that skills. That is not love. That is attachment and control. And they are different things. So step back. Watch this person. Enjoy. If you have a person in your life that you love, enjoy being with that person. And let them be who they are. Because who they are is unique. Who you are is unique. We are all unique. But what people try to do is put us all into little boxes. And it's an awful thing for a, a person to be put into boxes like, you know, we went to this school or we were born here or we're from this country or from this religion. You know, everybody's trying to put us in little boxes. Just leave us. You know, it makes me wonder sometimes when I'm thinking about this topic that all these uh, children that have been molded into doctors and engineers and lawyers and everything, how many poets, how many painters, how many authors have we lost? because their parents have made them do something that actually they could have given something to the world, some creative thing, but they were never allowed. And that's why attachment is a poison, because it is not going to help you, and it's not going to help the thing you're attached to. So the opposite of it isn't detachment. The opposite is love. Step back, watch it, enjoy it. Knowing full well that it will go one day, you know, even if you live with somebody for 60 years, or one of you is going to go. I mean, it's part of life. So stepping back and watching people be who they are and allowing them to be who they are is just such a wonderful thing to do. Instead of holding on and grasping at them and trying to mold them into something that you want, that is going to bring you suffering. And that's why we say, one of the largest parts of suffering we cause ourselves, emotional and psychological suffering, is getting attached to things. Right, and I think that's a wonderful example because um, often um, in teenage years, you know, we find somebody we like and we spend some time with them and we go, you know what, I, I want to be with them forever or they should never leave me because um, I feel loved, I feel appreciated. And there is some selfish aspect to that because mm -hmm. it's going to go and and once it ends and you're asking yourself, why do I feel so much hurt? Well, it's because mm -hmm. while you were there, you weren't simply enjoying it. You were always attaching yourself to an outcome that, oh, I should continue being with this person. They should continue making me feel loved or this and that. But when I think that's a really important step in the loss of any person, whether it's somebody you like, somebody in your family, it's to just sort of accept that it's gone and it's it's, it's a part of it. You enjoy it. You enjoyed it while it lasted, and that's about it. Yeah, so as, instead of, you know, maybe somebody's left you or a family member has died, instead of focusing on that they've gone and I'll never see them again, we should focus on that I had all this time with this person and we had all these good times together. So we have our memories. So physically the person's not here. But mentally, we never have to let that person go. We're always has got those memories so if we don't attach ourselves to things we have these great memories if you get attached you're going to have less memories of good times because a lot of the time it's all about controlling them and remember what i said at the beginning of the interview about internal and external we cannot control this external but we're trying we're trying to 
of this thing and it's just gonna bring us more and more dissatisfaction and pain in our lives right and that's a wonderful thing you said about looking back at the good memories but for some of us that can be really hard because we go you know what that person left me for somebody better and so all all of the memories are meaningless because they never really meant what they said or that person has gone he has left me and they never did anything nice for me and there was no you sort of look back at it with a lot of sometimes a little bit of resentment hate sometimes especially when you feel like you've been done wrong by that person so is there any way to reframe that emotion yeah but you see that back to the attachment though isn't it that you know they are gonna go if you realize that you wouldn't have been holding on to them and so now you wouldn't be looking back and thinking that oh they've walked away from me they've left me they're horrible you wouldn't be having those thoughts because you'd have already known that one day, you know, it is so unreasonable to think that we can find somebody and the rest of our lives we're gonna to be together with them. It's unreasonable. We change. Just look at how you were 10 years ago and think how you are gonna think and act 10 years into the future. We all grow, we all change. We all have different influences as we go. So it is really, quite unreasonable for us to think, yeah, I found the one now and the rest of my life I'll be with this person. I mean, if you are, then that's fantastic. But, but it's a rare thing for that to happen. So remember that all this that goes on in your head, particularly at uh, you know your age, at a young age, it, these are learning experiences. These are things you go through. And the more that you become aware of them and you have ideas of how to work with them, the more you'll grow and you will change. And, you know, what you experience now is going to mold you into the person that you're going to be in the future. So we have to go through the, I mean, we can't stop. We shouldn't want to stop, you know, a little bit of heartache, a little bit of anxiety and all these things, because they are going to make you who you are. They're going to make you stronger they'll make you more resilient. And, you know, if you're going to just be uh, looked after and, you know, wrapped in cotton wool, then you're never going to have resilience. So then later on in life, it's not going to help you. So we have to go through some of these bad times. So don't see them as, you know, why me and I'm a victim and it's always me. Because just think, okay, it is happening now. What do I need to do to help myself through it? And remember that part of it is in your control. The way you think, the way you feel, the way you act, all of that is down to you. Right, and that's, and that's a really wonderful thought to have, especially, you know, when you feel like you've been cheated on, whether you're resentment, you're angry. You, it's wrong of you to expect somebody, first of all, to be with you forever. That's again, putting them in that little box. I mean, if they mm -hmm. wanna leave, they, they have, they're going to leave that you can't do anything about that because it's not in your control if they're going to cheat they're going to cheat and that's simply um that's how it is right right and so um my next question is in your journey on this path you've been doing this for a lot of time you've been to many countries spoken about meditation you've been about this monk um if you could pass on to if you could pass on one piece of advice to anybody who is who wants to get into meditation who wants to become more mindful especially kids in our age what would it be i think that uh don't label these things you know when you say meditation and that it just makes people turn off you know just sit quietly sometimes and just go inward i mean that's a nicer way of looking at it what i would say is that you know we need to be spending time with ourselves this isn't selfish this is about learning about ourselves the more you know about yourself the more that you can change you can grow and you can mold yourself into the person you want to be if you never sit down quietly and look inward you will never ever know you and when things start coming up in your head they will surprise you you think oh how did I think, why did I think like that? Why did I act like that? If you spend time getting to know yourself, you know, you can live with somebody for 60 years and you will never know them. You'll only ever know what they show you. 
The only person you can ever know in this world is yourself. Only you know what is going on in there. And we don't even spend the time to do that. So I would encourage you to spend time away from all these devices and all this technology. I mean, okay, it's great, it is helping us, but it's also hindering us. It's stopping us, it's distracting us, and it's stopping us looking, who am I? Why am I thinking like that? Why do I act like that? Why do I have this bias? Why do I have that discrimination? Why are these my concepts? All of those things we need to be looking at. You can't just accept, or you shouldn't just accept that this is who I am. Because, you know, there's such a thing as neuroplasticity where we can mold our brain like plasticity. So the whole of your life, you can be changing, you can be growing, but you can only do that when you get to know yourself. And the way to get to know yourself is just to sit quietly, close your eyes and look inward and ask yourself these questions. You know, a great practice to do, particularly at your age, if you don't want to do meditation or mindfulness is to do just before you go to sleep do like 10 minutes of a reflection practice so just either sit down or lay down close your eyes and look back over the day so you know we are told that we learn from our experiences this is clearly not true because for one thing if we did we'd never make the same mistake twice and we do and another reason is that Every moment is an experience for us and every moment is a new experience. So we can't learn from our experiences. We learn from reflecting on our experience. We learn from looking at our experience. So at the end of the day, if you don't want to do meditation, look back over the day at the key things that worked for you today. I did this and this was the outcome. Because what you're doing is you're reinforcing that. So that's a good way to act. I did this and this happened. So by looking at it, you're learning from the experience and you're reinforcing that behavior. And then look at the things that didn't work out quite the way you wanted them to. And then think about how, how can I act next time? What you're doing there is you're planting the seed. So when you find yourself in the, that situation again, Remember what I said about the brain likes patterns, it will go to a pattern. You've planted that seed, that's a new pattern. So the brain will go there. So now you have a new way of acting. So what you've done is you've learned from your experience, you've reinforced the uh, good things, and you've thought of different and better ways to act from the things that didn't work out. If you do that every day, just for five or 10 minutes and just look at the key parts of your day, you will grow, you will change naturally. You're planting those seeds. It's such a simple thing to do. It doesn't need to watch your breath or bring your thoughts back or sit cross-legged on the floor or anything at all. It just needs you to sit quietly, close your eyes and look back. We can all do that. And you know, with that, for people who are studying, what I would say to you is do that. When you're studied, at the end, before you shut the book and go off, close the book, close your eyes, reflect back. What have I learned today? Because what you're doing then is you're taking it from your short-term memory and putting it into your long-term memory. So you're more likely to remember what you've just studied. I mean, we've all been there. You shut the book, you walk away and think, what did that say? Oh, I've forgotten. So you can also do this reflection practice after you've studied to reinforce what you've learned. So you remember, again, learning from experience. So I would say that's probably one of the best bits of advice I can give to people your age. This is the end of this episode, but if you'd like to listen to more of my podcasts, go to my website, yeshirabge.com So thank you so much for listening. And remember, the only person we can ever really know is ourselves. Bye for now.